again, uh, again, uh, welcome uh, today, this Saturday afternoon, uh, to a forum uh, that's being organized by the Singapore Heritage Society. And I think it'll be a very important and very exciting forum uh, on reading Singapore history. Uh, let me just say a few words about what we intend to do uh, in this couple of hours. Uh, Singapore history, the writing of Singapore history has been invoked in recent years. Numerous participants of the past and political leaders have penned their memoirs or started up their own blogs, writing about their past experiences. Sorry, can you hear me? It's a bit like muffled. Okay. Fine, huh? thanks. Uh, academics are also beginning to present new narratives and new perspectives of the past, uh, often with new sources. So the reader, uh, the person who is interested in reading about Singapore history is confronted with an explosion of historical work and historical memoirs and biographies. Much of this work has been biographical or semi-biographical in nature. Uh, for instance, uh, on one side of the political spectrum, we've got Lee Kuan Yew's memoirs in 1998 and 2000, which kind of sort of started this whole ball rolling in terms of writing uh, memoirs and biographies. It's not the first. There have been memoirs written before that. Um, but Lee Kuan Yew's memoirs have sort of been taken as the kind of a spur to the writing of uh, new accounts. Uh, much more recently, there has been Men in White, uh, the so-called uh, untold story of the PAP, which supposedly presented uh, the perspectives of all the different participants, including the ones who were defeated. Um, the Institute of Southeast Asian Studies has also, uh, in recent years, been involved in publishing accounts of the political pioneers uh, of Singapore's history. Uh, many of them who were members of the PAP Guard, such as Go Ping Sui, S. Rajaratnam, Lim Kim San, and uh, Kevin Tan here, President of the Heritage Society, is uh, responsible uh, for two of the non-PAP accounts, uh, David Marshall, and why was this all coming uh, on Lee Jin Seok? On the other side, uh, we've got uh, what has sometimes been called alternative histories, or more accurately, I think, new leftist histories uh, of the 1950s and 1960s. We've got the book that we're doing today, The Fajar Generation, and memoirs or biographies of Fong, uh, Fang Chuan Ti, The Plan, Sai Zahari, James Putucheri, Fong Sui Suan, Lin Jin Seok, and many of them, interestingly, have been translated uh, also into English, those which were originally Chinese. Uh, the historian Ali Weasel said, the executioner always kills twice, the second time with silence. So I think the emergence of these new histories of the left, uh, an attempt uh, to ensure that the executioner does not kill twice. But we think also that reading history and reviewing history are just as important as publishing and writing history. I mean, we do not know how these histories are being read, uh, and there has been no discussion on how they should be read. Um, so I think this is where the Heritage Society is coming in on this forum about how to read and approach a book like The Fajar Generation. Some questions come to mind. Uh, what are the benefits and the difficulties of reading Singapore history? Uh, what do we make of the claims that are made in these books? Uh, the claims and, and in these books are important because these books are partly historical and partly biographical. You know, they, they are not straightforward histories, they are not academic histories. Should we approach these books as history, or as memory, or as both? So I think it is important for readers and those of us who have an interest in Singapore history to take a discerning and intelligent approach uh, to these multi-layered text. Now, Men in White Forum uh, on History as Media Event was kind of the first uh, uh, event which was held actually in this library also in January, uh, which looked at uh, some of the issues uh, pert pertaining to the book Men in White, uh, which was published by uh, Singapore Press Holdings. It was organized by the Asia Research Institute uh, and presented by three academics. And what we want to do today is kind of extend this discussion and this review of Singapore history. Uh, we also know that much of these new histories, these new biographical accounts, 
uh, have not been written by historians or academics, but by the participants themselves, or by journalists, or by people with a direct connection or empathy for the participants. Uh, many of these books are also set in opposition to one another, and they submit contradictory claims to history. Right? So they, they have that kind of oppositional character uh, to one another. They, they are very black and white in that sense. I also want to make a point about Singapore history watching. Uh, you know, uh, history, as many of these books are appearing, uh, there have been people who have been watching uh, the publication and the presentation of these books. Um, so I'll make a point about how young Singaporeans are, have been reading history. Uh, in a forum that I talked about uh, for the online citizen in uh, late last year, um, I kind of made a statement a bit exaggerated, but I think it's an important point that many young Singapore uh, people are reading history for inspiration and vilification. They are reading Singapore history for for the heroes uh, who have been suppressed, who have been broken down, and they are also uh, reading Singapore history to, as a kind of way of watching the state, right? Looking for examples of suppression of um, political uh, censorship. In short, uh, many young Singaporeans are reading Singapore history for, well, put it shortly, Lim Chin Siong and Operation Cold Stop. And I think this is a bit of a concern to me. Right? And, and this is something that we should uh, discuss and talk about. Um, historians have a responsibility to get into the act and to talk about the books that have been written. It is important for historians, I think, uh, to provide critical academic perspectives. And it is important that historians do not give up their responsibility of, of you know, uh, playing a role and not giving up the public sphere of discussion to the historical participants and non-academic writers. Uh, let me say a few words about the book that we are uh, discussing today, The Vaja Generation, uh, The University Socialist Club and the Politics of Post-War Malaya and Singapore, published by SIRD in 2009. It appeared late last year, in September, shortly after Men in White, uh, and much more quietly than Men in White. Uh, it is a collection of essays on a group of English educated English uh, student activists who were members of one collective known as the Socialist Club at the University of Malaya and later University of Singapore in the 1950s and 1960s. I, I don't want to say too much about um, what the club represents uh, because uh, one of the speakers later is going to uh, provide a historical background. The Fajar Generation was a book, uh, some of you might have read it already, it was edited by former club presidents Po Sukai, Tan Jing Gui, and Ko Keiyu. In telling the story of the Socialist Club, the Fajar generation speak about a group that played a significant role in Singapore's political history, but about which little has been written beyond one event which gives the club its name. And many of us know this event, and this is the Fajar trial, the trial of eight of the members of the club for sedition, uh, when they publish an anti-colonial issue of the club's organ, Baja, uh, Don in Malay, in 1954. In most historical accounts, however, the Fajar trial is seen as the prelude to the formation of the PAP, and therefore it is quite easily appropriated as part of the PAP story. Uh, the Fajar generation, I think, attempts to go beyond that. Um, I make a comment about the title of the book, The Fajar Generation. Uh, it's a very strong uh, and powerful title. Uh, and it gives us an idea that the Fajar Generation book is a book uh, which represents the biography of a collective. It's a collective biography, speaking for a generation of people. Um, one of the things that really struck me about the book uh, was how it seemed to marry three different things. History, memory, and biography. Right? I mean, this is not simply about uh, the members of the club remembering the past uh, from their own memories and their recollections.